circulating in the press, and there are conflicting reports, that JP Morgan chief Jamie Dimon could be one of the front runners for the top job at Treasury. Given what he pledged to do on the campaign with trade, with China, and all things associated, Jamie Dimon as Treasury Secretary, how conflicting would those two things be in your mind? Well, first of all, I work with Jamie, so I think he's a great guy. He's been a great leader. J.P. Morgan would be a terrific Treasury Secretary. I think it's unlikely. That's my own personal opinion, just because I think Jamie understands the importance he, role he plays at J.P. Uh, look, at trade is a, is a serious issue that I, I believe in a campaign, everyone gets heated. If the president-elect follows through with what he said in, in his campaign, you're in for a very uh, tumultuous 2017 for, for the U.S. and for uh, much of the world uh, economically, because I think he, his language was so aggressive, not only naming China as a manipulator, but then some of the other language. And I, I understand from news speculation that President Xi of China in the conversation was rather aggressive back. So I think to watch whether the president-elect follows through on not only that, but his tearing up NAFTA and renegotiating, uh, these have an enormous potential, an enormous impact on uh, the U.S. economy and the global economy. Uh, starting a trade war or even a trade dispute of great uh, note uh, will, will cause great difficulty. On the other hand, as I said earlier, if the president-elect doesn't follow through on some of these promises, the people who were motivated around his rhetoric on trade, uh, who supported him and went with him, begin to turn against him, uh, he, he then has a, a serious problem, therefore, with Congress uh, in getting through what he wants to do. Either those things he can implement on his own, obviously he right. could kill TPP, but uh, getting things done will make it much more difficult. Well, exactly. And you made the two points. Number one, this is something the president can do on his own. He can't blame com Congress if he can't get something through on trade. He can do it on his own. Right. And number two, he's been pretty clear and pretty consistent about what he thinks about trade. So if you were advising him, Bill, and let's assume from what he wanted to sort of climb back down off of the most extreme version, how would you advise him to do that without losing his base? Uh, well, I wish I was that smart to figure that out, to be frank with you, considering how far he went. I think I'd just be very direct with the Chinese. I'd try to do it quietly, not rhetorically. I wouldn't do it uh, using the bully pulpit as much as sending uh, people who are very close to him with the Chinese to sit down and say, here are the three areas that we, we must have something on these areas. There's a bill now on reciprocity. There's a bill against state-owned enterprises coming to the U.S. and buying uh, companies. They've ver been very aggressive in the technology space. I, s I think you're going to see those bills move forward. And the question will be whether the president supports them, encourages them, which will go very far in this sort of anti-China uh, 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 period we're in right now, at least politically uh, in that period.